Thank you, sir. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence tonight. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your grace that is on our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the peace that we receive in our lives when we obey your word and when we walk out your plan for our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night that we may come together in fellowship and worship and, and study your word and advance our knowledge and our understanding of you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the windows of heaven are open over our lives, Heavenly Father. And there, there is an open heaven over each and every one of us that is here this night. Heavenly Father, we thank you that there's an open heaven even over this ministry and this church. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your manifestation presence that are going to continue to be moved in each and every one of our lives. Now, God, as we go into your word on tonight, let your Holy Spirit have its way. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Let us understand and receive your word with great revelation knowledge. And we thank you for this opportunity to worship. We thank you for this opportunity to praise. And we thank you for this opportunity to hear from you on tonight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, giving honor to our pastor, Bishop Hank Furrow. Thank you for this opportunity tonight. Pastor Allison, thank you for this opportunity. Pastor Tony, Pastor Ralph all the other staff leaders that are represented here in our ministry, thank you for um, allowing me to um, coexist with you guys and be a part of a great opportunity to see God manifest in our lives. I thank God for all of the opportunities that um, have come unto me since I've been here. I thank God for even the changes that I've seen in my life and in my family. You know, I thank God for my wife who's also here with me tonight. Um, I thank God for how we have grown together in ministry and um, I actually realized that we can work together in one building as a team and get along, <laughs> not just at home. <laughs> so I thank God for that. Um, that was a very interesting thing before it started. We want to figure out how that was going to work out, but it's working. So I thank God for that. Um, that's a good thing. Amen. Somebody say amen. That's a good thing. Um, Tonight, I'm not going to be long. We have a, um, a conference ahead of us, um, and so I'm not going to hold you long tonight so you can save some for the conference. I believe this conference is going to be um, very good for this ministry. I think it's going to be eye-opening for all of us. I think it's a, um, a right-time conference. Um, I think it's some um, things that I believe in my heart there's some things going to be said and it's going to be spoken that it's going to open the eyes and the mind, and it's going to open the revelation of this time that we live in now. Some of us are asleep, and we need to wake up. And I believe that, um, and the sleep I'm talking about is not snoring. I'm talking about spiritually. And I believe that this conference is an on-time conference um, for the move of God in his church today. I believe the man of God that is going to deliver this conference I just believe that God is working in his spirit each and every day, that a fresh, a newness, a, a, a new revelation of um, what he's going to say and how he's going to present it. I believe when he comes to the lighthouse, he will present it very different from where he's presented any other ministry. I believe we're going to pull from him information and knowledge, and it's going to be a, a good work. So tonight I'm not going to hold you um, so you can save some of that ability to be able to pull from him in the spirit. Uh, thank God for um, everyone that's even watching and um, sharing with us um, by way of Internet. Um, thank God that God has given us an opportunity to tap into that ministry and to open up the ability for um, people to fellowship with us um, through the Internet. Um, I encourage those that um, utilize that service to um, view our services and to be involved. I also encourage you. Um, to be involved physically. Um, your presence is needed in the place. Um, I encourage you to press in to coming out to worship services. It's a difference when you are present in the place. There is a blessing 
in receiving the knowledge and viewing the knowledge, but it's a difference when you're present in the place. There's a different anointing. There's a different presence. And it's also good for brothers and sisters to be able to see each other, to fellowship with each other, to see you in good spirits, to see you in good health. So I encourage the ones that, you know, may view us over the Internet, um, press in to coming out to the services, having your presence in the service. To those that are here tonight that constantly press in, that constantly come, that are constantly here, there's a, a great blessing in your life, on your life, and that is also ahead of your life. But because of your obedience and because you press through, I know some of us have no choice in the faith home, but because you, <laughs> the ladies looking at me like, huh? <laughs> I mean, because you press through, and, and you are here, um, God is seeing your desire for change. Some of us need a change in our life. Some of us need a change in our circumstances. Some of us need a change in our situation. So your pressing in and your continual to come, your co staying connected, is your way of showing God, I am serious about my tomorrow. I'm serious about my future. I'm serious about what I'm trying to do in my life. I'm serious about the change that I need. There's pressure. Amen? Amen. And I'm serious about getting a release. So I thank God even for this opportunity to talk about um, prosperity. We're coming from the book, um, Why God Wants You to Prosper, um, by Jerry and someone else can pronounce his last name for me. Savelle. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm going to be coming out of chapter 6, and the topic is develop a lifestyle of obedience. Oh. Develop a lifestyle of obedience. Obedience. Obedience as a lifestyle is very necessary for us to walk in God's presence and in God's love for our life and then fulfill God's plan for our life. Obedience is one of the main ingredients for prosperity. Those that prosper in life are an example of obedience in God's word being carried out. The result of you obeying God's word is the outward demonstration of the prosperity that is happening in your life. Now, I don't define prosperity by a car. I don't define prosperity by a neighborhood that I live in, or you live in, a house. I don't define prosperity by an amount in a bank account. It's not defined about how well you dress, how well you look. It's not defined about who you hang out with, your in crowd. Prosperity is a whole total fullness of peace in your life. So anyone that has a problem with prosperity or anyone that has a problem with a prosperity message, that's an individual that has a problem with the wholeness of peace and love being in someone's life. Because prosperity is not only just about money. Prosperity is not only just about trying to get, you know, something out of someone. Prosperity is about a way of living. It's a way of living to be prosperous in every area of your life. Now, finances is important, is it not? Yes. Because through finances, it also brings peace into your life. Finances bring peace into your life. When you're broke, you're under stress. Can I get an amen? <laughs> when you're struggling financial, that brings stress. Stress can cause problems in your health. Stress can cause problems in your marriage. Stress can cause problems on your job. Stress can cause problems in your relationships, in your family, in your loved ones. Stress causes problems. But prosperity is a total wholeness where there's no stress involved. Prosperity stretches to every corner of your life, from one end to the other end. That's what prosperity does. So tonight I want to talk about obedience, the key to prosperity. Because it's important that we understand how to be prosperous. And we understand how to live prosperous. Obedience is the major key to prosperity. 
when you obey the word of God, when you obey God's command, when you obey Matthew chapter 6, 33, that's the scripture I'm using for tonight. When you obey these commands, you set yourself in line to receive total prosperity, total peace, total fullness that comes from God. Obeying is complying with God's word. Obeying is being influenced by God's word. Obeying is yielding to God's word. Obeying is willing to obey God's word. And obeying has value on your morals. Value on your morals. It is not taboo and it's not top secret that we live in a day and time where morals, immorality is the way of the world. People are making decisions. People are influencing movements. People are doing things because of their own immoral nature. They have a desire to disobey anything that has to do with God's plan for anyone's life. If you notice that a lot of the issues that we're faced with in not only in America, but in a lot of other countries where there's a lot of, a lot of wars and, and, and issues and problems and things happening in the world, most of those are all in line with anything that has to do with disobeying God's word when it comes to peace. People fight against peace. It's against peace. It's against God's plan. It's against God's word. The, the huge homosexual movement, that whole movement is because people don't want to obey God's word and they find peace in satisfying their flesh. It has nothing to do with I was born with a, a, a pink rainbow around my head. It has nothing to do with, you know, when I was raised, I played with doll babies. It has nothing to do with that. It is totally the flesh of individuals having total control of them, and they are out of their mind, literally out of their mind, and they're operating in that flesh because they want peace in their life. And they can't find peace in money. They can't find peace in drugs. They can't find peace in all the other things they're doing. So they're willing to walk out anything that they think that they may find peace in. So they behave in any way. They behave immoral. They behave in any way that's contrary to obeying God's word. Obeying God's word. Why do people refuse to obey God's word? Because God's word put stipulations, commands, and demandments on the way that you live. When you are in God's word, when you are walking out God's plan, there are commandments on how you have to live and what you do. There are no corners around. I remember a long time ago, my father-in-law, I was talking to him about something that I was trying to do, and I was struggling. I was struggling, you know, I was young, and I was struggling with the word. And I remember sitting to the table with him, and he took out a piece of paper, and he drew a straight line on the paper. And next to the straight line, he drew a wiggly line. And he said, the straight line is when you obeying God's word and obeying God's plan. You walk the straight line. But the wiggly line is when you have his word, but you're trying to figure it out your own self. You, 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 you go a little bit over here and a little bit over there and a little bit over here and a little bit over there. You don't want to walk the straight line because the straight line is hard. So you want to do a here, do a there. You're trying to get around it. The word is one way. Boom. There's no way of getting around it. There's no way of getting, it's no wiggly about it. It's straight. He lays it out. So to prosper, 
in the wholeness of life, understand I'm talking about prospering in peace and the wholeness of life, it requires us to obey God's word. We cannot be those men that are lovers of their selves. We cannot be boasters. We cannot be those that are proud. We cannot be those that are blasphemers. We cannot be those that are disobedient, unthankful, unholy. We cannot be those examples. People have the audacity, audacity to live unholy lives and put it on display in front of you and have the audacity to come to you for a resolution for their unholiness and expect for you to think it's okay. Give me another chance so I can continue to be unholy some more. People are now in a mental state where it is anything goes. Anything goes. The church has a sole responsibility to be that example of God that continues to walk that straight line. Why the church, the true church, those men, those women filled with the Holy Spirit, the true church has a call to walk the straight line. Why is that? Because there are people that come and say they are of the church, but they're bringing pollution into the church, polluting the church, not the true movement of God. Don't get it confused. I'm not talking about they're, they're polluting the true church because they can't pollute the, the true church. I'm talking about the organized body. The organized body. Because of unholiness and a refuse, they refuse to obey. They refuse to walk in obedience to the word, but yet they want to come and sit among us. They, they yet want to come in fellowship with us. They know the truth, but deny the power. Know the truth, but deny the power. I encourage you tonight. It's not a fire and brimstone message. I encourage you tonight to continue in your obedience to God's word. To continue in obeying those things that you have been taught, those things that you are learning, those things that you are receiving, those revelations that are coming from God, continue in that and allow the prosperity of God to take a total, total, total control over your life. There is nothing wrong with prospering financially or any other way in your life. There's nothing wrong with it. Personally, I have no problem with it. I have no problem with money whatsoever. I have no problem with being prosperous whatsoever. I have no problem with living where I would desire to live whatsoever. Driving what I was driving, buying what I was buying, doing what I was no, whatsoever. I have no problem with having good health whatsoever. I have no problem with having nice, smooth skin whatsoever. I have no problem with long life, living a long life whatsoever. I have no problem with peace being a part of my life. And when I go into a place, that peace radiates off of my life and it changes the environment of a room. I have no problem with that. We should change the environment when we walk into a situation. Prosperity is peace on the inside of me that changes that breaks yokes, that break chains, that changes situation. That's prosperity. I'm a situation changer. I'm a trendsetter. That's what prosperity is. When you walk on your job, just because you there, peace takes over in the office. When you walk into your business deal because you there, that deal goes through. Because of the prosperity in your life, when you make plans to do something in your life, they are successful. 
there's no failure. And even if it stops, it's not a failure. You're just taking a rest. God's still going to move on your behalf. So prosperity is a total way of life. But it requires obedience. And in that obedience, we receive the patience of God. In that obedience, we, we become submissive to God's word. In that obedience, we comply with authority. 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 Complying with authority is like a working out in a gym. When you're working out in the gym, you have a goal. You're trying to reach something. You're doing something. You're pressing yourself. You're pushing yourself because you're trying to accomplish something. You're trying to either lose weight, gain weight, lose muscle, gain muscle. You, you're doing something. When you're working yourself out, you have a goal. Co uh, complying with authority is like working out. Because the more I comply with authority, the more I work out of me the spirit of disobedience. The more I work out of me pride. The more I work out of me blasphemy. Yeah, people talk about authority. <laughs> The more I work out of me, unthankfulness, unfaithfulness. See, when you comply with authority, it causes you to take on a spirit of, of humbleness. It causes you to also reverence those that are in authority. It causes you to acknowledge that God has power over someone that is influencing your life. So as they prosper, watch this, as God prosper in their life and they have authority over you, they feed into your life. That's a part of that overflow, that shaking together. <laughs> that overflow that that person that has authority over you, that overflow that they experience, it overflows into your life. So that's why God requires us puts a demand on us to comply with authority, spiritual authority. Those that have spiritual rule over your life, those that are speaking into your life spiritually, you want to comply with that authority. If it lines up with the word of God, I said if, and you know it's genuine, comply with that authority so you can receive the prosperity that is blessed on the mandate that is on their life. It becomes on your life. Our ministry in a whole, Lighthouse Revival Center, our ministry is an example of an authority. It is an authority in this city that represents the kingdom of God. It's not trying to do anything else. It's representing the kingdom of God. The authority over this house is of the kingdom of God. When you are comply with the authority over this ministry, over this house, you receive the blessings that come through it. You have to get that revelation. You have to get that revelation. You have to get that revelation. Because we are called to also deposit into sow a seed into what we believe, what we've been blessed from. If everyone that has come through this building, has come through this ministry, that has been blessed through this ministry, if every one of them was to come back and sow into this ministry, I'm sorry, it has to come like this. If you come back and sow into what you receive, if you just come back and give the tenth of what happened in your life, Think about it. 
You do 18, so a tenth of what happened in your life in those 18. God prosper you outside of these, built, these walls. You come back and sow into this. If everyone that has been blessed by it, sow into it, prosperity will not even be an issue. It won't even be a concern. It will just be a way of life for us. It will just be a way of life for us. Somebody say amen. amen. For a believer, obedience is choosing to do things God's way. In the book, I'm going to read a little bit from the book. Jerry put in the book, and this is um, basically from a scripture he quoted in the book. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters, from Matthew 6, 24. There is a responsibility where the body of Christ is concerned to serve one master, not just give lip service to him. When we relinquish our relationship with Satan, we become loyal to God. When we say, Satan, you are no longer the God of my life. I make Jesus the Lord of my life. We are actually committed ourselves to a lifestyle of, of obedience. When you say to your lifestyle that Satan, you are no longer in charge of my life, I commit my life to Jesus. Our commitment leads us to a lifestyle of obedience. So obedience begins with a commitment, a life-changing commitment. When we tell Satan, you have no more control over my life, I commit my life to Jesus Christ. I commit my life to God's plan, his kingdom. I commit my life. I totally give over everything that has to do with my life to the kingdom of God and God's plan. Let the world do whatever they want to do. <laughs> I am committed to God's plan. It's safety in that. It's security in that. Regardless of what happens around us, we know that we are protected. We know that we have security. We know that we have shelter. We know that our needs are met. We know that we are provided for by the kingdom of God. We don't have to fall apart, worry, lock up in the house, shake in front of the TV watching the news about what is going on outside. Because we know that our father has our needs in his hands. We know that regardless of what happens in this world, we will be provided for. We will be taken care of. End times going to come. But in those times, we're going to be blessed. In those times, we will prosper. As we obey his plan. Lifestyle of obedience, knowing how to live and prosper and doing so. Knowing how to and doing so. Knowledge is important. You have to know how to be prosperous. You have to know how to live in prosperity, in a wholeness of life. It's easy for me to preach to you and tell you, obey, obey, obey. But if you don't know how to walk it out, if you don't know how to live in it, then you struggle with it. You struggle with it. You can have a, a source, you can have a way, but no knowledge, and that source is of no good to you. You can even have the power, but no knowledge, that power is no good to you. I can give you instruction. But if you don't have the knowledge and know how to use the instruction, it's of no good to you. So therefore, we have to seek understanding. We have to seek knowledge. We have to seek direction. We have to seek it here. 
We, got to seek, we have to seek it here. This is where it's laid out to us. This is where we seek it. How do we seek it? In our own study time. In our own prayer time. How else? In fellowshipping together. In coming together and hearing the word of God teached. And hearing the word of God preached. Tapes. Books. Whatever it takes to constantly build up our knowledge and our understanding on how to obey and be prosperous. Someone can give me an opportunity, but if I don't have any knowledge of how to use that opportunity, it is of no value to me. I can stand here and tell you that you are prosperous, but if you don't have any knowledge of understanding on how you are prosperous and how to apply it to your life, it is of no value to you. We can go into a conference about end times, but if you don't have a knowledge about what's going on around you, it doesn't matter about the end times. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is important. Obedience is only exercised when you have knowledge and understand how to obey something. Somebody say to men. The word of God said people perish. Why? People perish. Having knowledge, but the lack in some areas of obedience, we perish. Having knowledge, but in some areas of our life, if we are not obedient, we perish. We perish financially. Having knowledge, but lacking obedience in some areas of your life, you perish financially. So you have to have knowledge, but you also have to obey God's word for prosperity to be whole in your life. The wholeness is in having knowledge, is obeying and understanding. You can have a form of godliness <laughs> and deny the power and there was no manifestation of prosperity. A form of godliness, I show up on Wednesday night, Friday night, Sunday, and I sit there and I have my form of godliness. I smile, I clap, I sing, I praise, I come up to the front of the altar, I jump up and down, hallelujah, praise the Lord. My form of godliness. But because I don't have obedience in my life, I deny the power therein to prosper. I can jump with you. I can sing with you. I can say hallelujah with you. But there's areas in my life where there's no obedience to God's word. So what you get is an outward show. But inward, I'm failing. I'm dying. I'm falling. I'm not prospering. So what you have is an, an emotional roller coaster. Some days you see me, I'm happy. Some days you see me, I'm mad. I'm an emotional roller coaster. I'm happy today, tomorrow I'm crying and need prayer. An emotional roller coaster. You never know what's coming when you see me coming. Is I'm are they happy today? Is it Friday today? Is it joy today? Or am I gonna get the beast? Disobedience will put you on an emotional roller coaster. Because disobedience does not deal with those issues in your life that you have not gotten delivered with from. Disobedience does not deal with the issues in your life that you have not gotten delivered from. So delivery is in obedience to his word. That's how you get delivered from those things. So therefore, when you're delivered, you no longer have to live on a roller coaster. You don't have to have mood swings. Because the peace of prosperity is evident in your life. And that peace glows out of your life and it impacts other people. We are required to prosper so we can sow into someone else's prosperity. 
We are required to prosper so we can show evidence that God's kingdom plan works. If the church is not prospering and showing that example to the world, what hope do they have? We are their only hope. Believe me, not every single person that is not saved, that is out in the world, not every single person is enjoying the way that this world is going. People want an answer. And we, the church, are their only answer. So they have to see the prosperity of God in our lives so it can attract them and bring them in. To sow into someone else's life, you have to have something to sow. Otherwise, you're just taking deposits. You have to have something to sow. Do you have a smile that you can sow? A hallelujah? A peace about you? A Pentecostal handshake? <laughs> Someone said to me tonight. Do you have that in your life to sow into someone else's life? Obedience is the key to prosperity. If you desire prosperity in your life, obedience to God's word is the key. So if you're struggling tonight, and there's an area in your life that you know you're struggling with, I, I just, <laughs> prosperity just not happening in, in this area. I'm not talking about just money. I'm not talking about just finances. It's other areas of your life where you just don't have total prosperity in that area of your life. And obedience to God's word could be a major concern. Maybe you don't see where you're being disobedient. Maybe there's blinders over your eyes. Tonight I want to pray for you that those blinders fall off. Tonight I want to pray for you that you see prosperity as a part of your life, as a necessity in your life as a gift in your life, that you may use it to give to someone else, that you may share with someone else. So tonight, if you are that person and you are serious enough about your life and serious enough about your future and serious enough about wanting to prosper in every area of your life, from one end to the next, from financial to, to peace to health, any area of your life, I ask you to come up tonight. I would like to pray for you tonight that God's total prosperity take full root in your life. If you are that person, please come up tonight. 